So I just wanted to make this video talking about uh, the comments that Slatan made on Carlos Vela. Um, it's pretty controversial uh, knowing that uh, the amount of goals and assists that Carlos Vela has compared to the amount of goals and assists that Slatan has. But I mean, Slatan is known for this behavior. It happened in uh, ESPN uh, interview with Hercules Gomez and I think I'm not so sure on the other guy's name I think his name is Alejandro but I'm not too sure of his last name but they were just interviewing him ahead of like uh, El Clasico or El Trafico the Clasico of LA and basically of LA Galaxy and LAFC and I mean Slatan made his opinion be known and <laughs> He didn't even care. He wasn't even going to comment on Carlos Vela until he was asked about him. And this is basically what he said. He said, by far, because if he's in his prime, how old is he? 29, said uh, Ibrahimovic. And he's playing in the MLS. He's in his prime when I was 29. Uh, and then he made them answer, I was in Europe. Uh, that's what Erkut Gomez said. And then he said, big difference. Satan Ibrahimovic has scored the winner in the MLS debut uh, between LAFC in 2016. He has 13 goals compared to the 19 that Carlos has. And he says he lives the derby. And this is what I just got to say. You know, if we compare both of them, their careers have been very different. Uh, Slatan is known for his aggressiveness, his impulsiveness, his way to get into other players' heads. And you can see this in other instances he's had in the MLS as well, right here with uh, this defender that he had this instance. But this is all a mind game. He knows what derbies are about. He knows what big old Clasicos or whatever are about in leagues. And he's bringing that fire here, you know. Uh, it's not really known. Players don't really say these type of things. They're not as outspoken, out as landish as Slatan is. And... Him being the same person that he is in all stages of his career and playing in big uh, Clasicos like in Barcelona, in uh, Milan, and all the other clubs he's been in. He's been in major competitions, major uh, derbies and all this stuff. The Manchester, I don't know, I guess uh, Man U, Liverpool, things like that. But this, this is like the new type of era. I mean, this is a new team. Um, they have their tension. They this is uh, Slatan's debut in MLS, and he won. It was that four-two thriller um, that he scored two goals, just announcing himself to MLS. But it's not been so appeal after that. But I mean, I want to take a look at both of their careers and just uh, compare them. You know, compare his twenty-nine years as well as Slatan's. And if we just take a look at Carlos Vela's career as a whole, I just want to say my opinion on that you know how he was in top clubs in Europe but he never actually had a solid place except in Real Sociedad you know and I just want to talk about how this has impacted his decisions um compared to Slatan's. and you know Vela is the poster boy of LAFC right now he's the main man he's scored the most goals he's one of the top players in MLS and He's let his intentions be known that he wants to be the MVP, in my opinion, because he didn't even go with Mexico to the Gold Cup. But in my opinion, they, they didn't really need him, but he would have been a plus, you know. But if we look at his career, he won that uh, sub-17 in Peru in 2005 uh, with uh, the Mexican national team, where they beat Brazil. I think it was like 3-0. And the sky was the limit, basically. They, they were announcing themselves to the world. Uh, Giovanni Dos Santos was also in that team, another player that failed to live up to expectation. But during that time as well, um, towards, I don't know, later years, I think in 2008, like three years later, he got a, he got signed by Arsenal and then was loaned out to Osasuna and other teams in Spain. But in Arsenal, he never really uh, had a place there. He was only there, I think, for like two seasons, like actually being on the team. But he was just being loaned out all over the place until he finally found a place in uh, Real Sociedad back in 2012. I think they loaned him out there, and then he just wanted to stay there. And that's where he made his partnership be known with Griezmann, Griezmann being a worldwide player right now, of having that uh, transfer, that big transfer to Barcelona. But I just want to talk about like their differences, you know, because Carlos Vela stayed in Real Sociedad. 
but Griezmann had other plans, you know. He wanted to pursue other directions, you know, other bigger ob- objectives in life. And he decided to go Atletico Madrid in 2014 for quite a big fee. I think it was like 50, 60 million uh, euros. And Carlos Vela, instead of trying to follow him and try to be with Griezmann, because even I remember there was instances where Atletico Madrid actually wanted him later on before he went to LAFC. Uh, he became the captain of Real Sociedad. He became basically maybe, I don't think of a, a, a legend, but maybe one of the standout players in Real Sociedad. He's very technically gifted, has a lot of lot of things going for him. He has a good shot. He shoots really well with his left, and you can see that in the MLS as well, but he was doing it in Spain as well. He's very technically gifted. He's really good. He plays a, a variety of positions, uh, attacking midfielder, he plays on the left. He plays on the right. He's very gifted. He was even linked with Barcelona. But, you know, things didn't pan out the way that he wanted. He spent like 10 years in Europe. Uh, he left He left to Europe at a very young age. I think he was even 18. So when he was leaving uh, Real Sociedad and he didn't really say his whereabouts of where he was going to go, people were linking him with Atletico Madrid. And Cholo Simeone even said that he praised Carlos Vela and he thought he was a good player. But he had different plans, you know. He decided that it was time to move somewhere else. And he decided to come to the United States. He decided to come to L.A. And he just, like, in the interviews that uh, you saw of him, they were saying, or he said, that it was time to go somewhere new. He was, uh, he's been 10 years in Europe, and he thought it was time to be closer to home, closer to Mexico. And he's just seeing the importance that LAFC brought to him uh, giving him the number 10, being the first player ever signed by this club. He he saw that uh, as important, and he drew that into account and decided to go to LAFC. So that's why he ended up in LA instead of Atletico or things like that or other clubs that he was being linked with during that time. And he, he stood out, you know. He's been a, a standout player. He's in his prime, like Satan says. And, I mean, you can just see the career paths. He has been known for not really liking soccer as much as uh, other footballers. He mostly plays it as a profession. Um, he's stated that I think he's even liked basketball even more. He'd rather watch a basketball game than a soccer game. And you can just see the ambition. That's what I want to say. You know, he's not as ambitious as other football players uh, knowing the talent that he possesses because this is just like a job for him. He's, he he does his job well. He's trying to progress. He's trying to be the best in the MLS, and he's really showing it. But he, instead of pursuing some challenges in Europe and playing for top clubs in Europe and competing, I don't know, maybe when he was linked with Barcelona, he should have pushed that move. And I mean, he would have been there with Griezmann right now. I mean, <laughs> he would have actually made the team instead of Boiteng. But they ended up getting Boiteng instead, so... I don't know. Some other things to take into account is uh, Carlos Vela's boyhood club, uh, Chivas Guadalajara. He's never even played there, not one minute. They're, they formed him in the Fuerzas Básicas, but he never actually played a, a minute in the first division. That's what I'm saying. He left Mexico super young. He left like at 18 years old, and he was already playing in Spain. So that's why his development um, was very fast, very accelerated, and he felt that it was time, you know, he was getting towards, I don't know, like 28, 27 years of age. And he thought it was time to go somewhere else. But I mean, like Satan said, he announced himself to the world, uh, his debut in MLS. And he's known for these controversial uh, comments and things that he says all the time. And those goals, I remember people were even excited to talk about the MLS for just that week because he was coming and... He came with, like, a big shot, that shot that he made and things like that. But, I mean, I also want to look at his history. I mean, uh, when he was, what, 28, 27, around that age, he was in Barcelona. He didn't end up panning out there. Uh, Pep Guardiola didn't like him one bit. And he says comments that he's less of a man and this and whatever. But, like I've said before, Pep Guardiola's for the discipline, and this is not a disciplined player. And we can just see that in his comments. So they ended up loaning him out to... AC Milan, AC Milan in 2010, 2011, and he didn't have such a great season there. Beginning, um, I think he even debuted 
in a match where they ended up losing two to zero in the Champions League as well. They weren't. I don't even think they they made it out the group, or they didn't even make it out the group stages. Where Tottenham and Real Madrid were the were the teams that made it out the group, and basically you could just see uh, how that <laughs> career pounded out for him when he was uh, twenty nine. Because, like, it didn't really pan out that great. Uh, he ended up leaving Barcelona. Barcelona ended up winning that season, the Champions League. And he hasn't had that luck of winning the Champions League. And he even said when he signed there that he was uh, going to win the Champions League with Milan. And he expected it. He expected to win it with them. He was signing there to win them a championship. And he signed for four years. Uh, first being a, a loan deal. But, like, once everything was clear... I think in uh, June of 2011, he he actually signed a deal, a four-year deal with Milan. But the next season, which was the other half of his 29 years, uh, was the 2011-2012. Basically, just that to October was where he was 29 because after that he turned 30. But that season was way better than the than the first season in Milan. He, he ended up scoring, I think it was like 28 goals in 32 matches because he had like a three-match ban for hitting someone in the face. A defender I think for I don't know and also another band for insulting the ref but he had a, a better uh, Champions League campaign he ended up uh, beating Arsenal I think in the knockout stages 4-0 to and then they ended up facing uh, Barcelona which they ultimately lost like 3-2 to two on aggregate but he, he put up a fight you know and Milan during that time was like it was like the last basically the last team before it actually went into extinction not not saying that it's gone now it's picking back up but they had a lot of young talent with uh Thiago Silva Alexandro Pato uh Seydorf Clear uh Seydorf uh Slatan all different types of players and Slatan was uh one of the main uh components of that team being the top goal scorer of the Serie A as well and he, his presence was known. He was the top player. If you look at FIFA 12, his stats were probably crazy. He probably had like a 94, 93 around there. He was in the 90s for sure in rating. And he he made his presence be known. He was one of the standout players in the Serie A. He was one of the standout players in uh, Europe as well. Like I said, his disciplinary actions or his disciplinary, his conduct is not the best. And that's maybe what brought to the downfall of not being in some important games and not being focused and things like that but his ego is a is a big part of his game as well because that's another way he gets in the player's uh, mind it's a big part of his game you know it's what he's about and this is what basically he's doing he's just trying to taunt Carlos Vela put him in this trap that um, I don't know make him feel down or something and make it easier for him to just keep bousting about himself, you know. And, I mean, I'm not really going to take him really seriously until he wins an MLS Cup or whatever. But, I mean, I mean, we also got to take into account his age. He's already, like, 37. So, I mean, he's, he's still going pretty hard for a 37-year-old. So, I'm not going to rate him. Or not, I'm not going to uh, question him for that. But Carlos Vela is having a standout season. Uh, his priorities are way different than Slatan's were. His priorities are way different than a lot of footballers are. He prefers other sports. He prefers doing other things in football. And football is just basically a drop for him. So maybe that's the difference in between these players. But Slatan, I mean, this is just his personality. He's just trying to stir things up before the game actually happens. He's just trying to get uh, the people talking, the people excited, to get the, uh, the people incentivized to see oh can Carlos Vela actually beat Slatan? uh can Slatan actually beat Carlos Vela who's gonna show up in this game who's gonna show up in this big uh derby classico uh, trafico whatever but this is just uh this is just a little dab or a little hit by Slatan to just try to provoke Carlos Vela I'm pretty sure him being a professional him being through all these instances in his career it's not really going to affect them as much. I mean, to be in this stage of this career, 
or this part of your career, you have to really be mentally stable to be in your prime. And news, news uh, articles, newspapers, other people, other players, other coaches, they, they say these outlandish things all the time. And you just got to have your mentality focused and know that this is just what people think, but you can change their mind, you know. And you just got to show it with your actions, basically. So we'll just see if Carlos Vela can actually just keep on showing out. And this is just basically what I have to say on the matter. Um, there's like a little history between both of the players, especially Slatan is 29 years old. But a little history on Vela and just how I feel on the matter. But this is just all I got to say on it. Um, I'll keep on bringing in the videos. I hope you subscribe and like to like the channel as well. I mean, like this video and peace out.